I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have two build days left to get this RM125 and the YZ125 up from rolling chassis to fire breathing dirt bikes. We actually have the viewer vote now live, so you can jump online and vote for your favorite bike, whether it's the YZ or the RM125. I know what I'd be picking. On top of that, we also have the show and shine on the 8th of October. So it's a chance for you to bring down your own bike so you can register online today. And that being said, I've got a lot to do, so I better get cracking. Okay, so a few areas to focus on. We've got the controls. Both Sydney and I are gonna work on that together. I'm gonna to rebuild the carby, sort out the electrics, and work out what we're gonna do with radiators. But first of all, Sydney's gonna clean the brakes. Yeah, we're gonna do a few modifications to the calipers, looking for that factory look. So I'm gonna jump on the die grinder. First time, we'll see how it goes. We better get to it, we got a lot to do. Feast your eyes on this rig. This little RM125 is looking absolutely brilliant and we've got a massive day ahead. Yeah, we do. It's day five and we want to get done the radiators, we want to get the controls on, we get the carburetor sorted out. What else we got to do? We've got the brakes, so we've got rebuild kits for the front rear master stillers and the calipers. So this RM125 is going to stop as good as it looks. We've also got the V-Force reeds to tackle and the electrics as well. So we've got a big yeah. day ahead. Yeah, we do. All right, awesome. It's time to attack the brakes now. We're going to start with the front caliper. Now it's super important when you're assembling your brakes to use brake fluid as lube. So we're going to use that to lube the fresh O-rings and we'll start rebuilding this caliper. So we'll take you along the journey as we go. So the perfect thing about these rebuild kits is they come with everything you need. So you've got new seals, a new brake pin, you've got all the new rubbers as well. So it's really simple and easy to do it yourself at home. Start with the thicker seal at the back and then you'll have your thinner seal at the front. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see how thick the grooves are. Just have a crack and you'll get it done. We're just assembling the front master cylinder. Now, in the All Balls Rebuild Kit, you will notice that you get two different seals here. It's really handy to check and important to check which seal goes on where. You can see on one of these seals, it has a tiny little slit. So that's the first one heading into the master cylinder and then you've got the standard seal on the outer. Make sure you check what seals go where, otherwise your brakes won't work. So we've gone to the effort of getting all this cool new stuff as you can see, it's a fair bit of damage on the original kill switch. All well, the plastic's broken. Having a closer look at the wiring, it's all exposed. So we'll open up the catalog. Go on right in catalog and we can see that just here, we've got all the electrical stuff starting from 20 bucks. So let's go and get a new kill switch. So this bolt hasn't been touched or removed in a while. So we just applied a little bit of heat. Um, to break out of that OEM lock type. So we got the rear caliper all cleaned up. We got rid of the lugs and we got that factory look going. So let's get it put back together. I don't actually know what I'm doing. So we got the rear wheel back on, a new axle blocks, the carrier and brake caliper all cleaned up. Carrier's obviously back on. We got to get some pads in and get the caliper back on now. So we're just assembling the front brake system. We do have a brand new braided brake line. Now these lines are far superior to the original rubber lines. They don't swell when you pull the front brake on, so they're much more efficient and a much better feel when you're applying that front brake. So we'll go ahead and mount this one up and we'll have a perfect front brake. So we're just splitting up the front brake system. Now the easiest way to do this is the Ballard's hydraulic brake pump. It makes it so simple and so easy. It basically sucks all the air through with a little bit of fluid until the brake system is completely bled. So you have a perfectly bled system which improves your brake feel on the handle and you can't get any better brakes than ones that are bled properly. It feels so good. It's almost too easy. going to rebuild the carburetor so it's nice and fresh. We've got an all balls carburetor kit, rebuild kit. Super handy, they have everything you need, all the gaskets, all new jets, needles, everything. So it's just a matter of taking out the old stuff and putting in the new stuff. Quick pit stop. Pad tie. 
Okay, so we've gone ham on the motor. Why not the Carby too? While we've got some stuff sent away, we've got the Carby all vapor blasted and clean. I've got it back in a bunch of bolts, so it's gonna be enjoyable putting it back together. While we're doing that, I've also got an all balls Carby repair kit. I'll utilize all the new gas that's out of that. The other thing is with this high performance kit, I've actually got recommendations and some extra jets and a different needle from the GYTR kit. So we'll follow those and get it all set up. So now it's time to put the electrics all back onto the bike. You did take a photo, didn't you? Mm. It's gonna pull all the electrics off now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I did, yep. Oh good, yep. perfect, happy days then. So I'm about to put the coil back onto the bike, but we've had the frame powder coated. So these actually have to have like metal to metal contact and the powder coating will stop that. So I'm gonna get the old Dremel out again and buff off some of that paint so we have contact. All right, so here we are, we're installing the V-Force 3 reed assembly. Now it does require slight modification to the original intake manifold. We have to knock off these two little uh, intake ports there. The V-Force 3 reeds are designed to increase airflow and basically improve performance of the motorcycle. So definitely an upgrade if you've got a two-stroke, throw it on and you'll notice a massive difference. <laughs> Like a glove. Like a glove. Okay, so I've got the rear wheel in the bike. Sydney's got that all sorted, ready for me to put the chain on. As you remember, the original chain was a big O-ring chain and it was riveted on. So worst case scenario for the bike, and we're gonna go on the improvements. We've got a nice lightweight race chain. It's thin, it's got no drag, and it'll allow us to get maximum horsepower through the small 125cc motor. So I'll cut that up, get it installed. Sydney's gonna be working on the front of the bike, getting the front brake styled. So we just got the chain rolled on and before I go ahead and cut it and we just had a quick chat with Sleater, he's going to be riding the bike initially on where he wants the wheel located in the swing arm. It does make a difference if you've got it right at the front or right at the back. It changes the handling a fair bit. He's pretty, pretty cruisy and he's opted for it to go right in the middle. So having the wheel right up the front of the swing arm um, actually decreases the wheelbase of the bike, it makes it handle a little bit differently to at the other end. I'm at the front, we're talking, it's gonna be a, a steeper head and angle, it's gonna turn better, but here a little bit twitchy at high speeds, whereas at the back, it's gonna be a lot better at high speeds, but not turn as great. We're just about to break the chain here. I've got it marked and I've taken it off to make it nice and easy, give me a plenty of room to work with. And we're using the Ballard's chain breaker. It's just a matter of driving this main outer piece here, hold it in, in with a 17 mil, and then driving the pin down with this 14 mil and easy to go. Okay, I've got the chain on. I've got the joining link in. We just need to do up the clip link. I'm gonna make the job nice and easy using these clip link pliers. You can see they're elongated and shortened on one end. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. You can cut that out, right? A little longer than a few minutes later. Great success. Lining up the wheel now. It's really important to keep the wheel centered and aligned so you get nice even wear on the chain and sprockets. If you don't, you will actually probably increase the wear of your chain and sprockets much quicker. Using these new chain adjusting blocks, the indicators are really obvious, whereas with the OEM ones, it's very hard to read and, and see. So using these markers aligned with the swing arm makes it very easy to keep the chain adjusted and level. Just tightened up the chain on this bike. As a general indicator with most Japanese bikes, there is an actual correct measurement in every manual. However, uh, three fingers is the rule of thumb. At the end of the chain slider. Too tight and you'll put too much stress on your gearbox and um, cause some damage. Okay, so Sydney's gone to go and put the front brakes on. Um, turns out we've got a bit of damage to the top master cylinder here. Um, all the screws are rounded out and seized. I'm gonna try and get it out without having to drill it. Fingers crossed that it just happens. We we'll use this impact driver and that'll help break the seal or crack the seal and get the nut out, hopefully. 
First one is good, but I did pick the easy one. Second one's really damaged, so I might have to try and modify the screw so we can get one of the little bits to actually go in there and get some grip, and fingers crossed it works. <laughs> Alright, so we've managed to salvage this just. I was able to knock this one out with the impact driver. The second one was too mushed up. Actually had to just get the drill to it. Managed to break the seal with it then. So, we've done well. <laughs> Alrighty, day five is done. The bike is looking more and more like a dirt bike as time goes on. Yep, we've got everything, oh no, we haven't got everything done. We've got heaps done. We've got the controls are on to the bike. We've got the electrics on. The carburetor's been rebuilt and the carby is on the bike. All the brakes are bled. We've got the chain on as well. This bike is getting closer and closer to, to the point where we can start it up and see what it she sounds like. We have one more build day to go to finish off the bike. So I'm actually feeling pretty confident that we're gonna get it all done. Mm. <laughs> we still have a lot to do. <laughs> so we're rounding out day five. A few issues today, actually a lot of issues, so let's hear it. Yeah, so bike is coming together and it's actually starting to take shape of a dirt bike. However, we've had lots of issues. Strip bolts, threaded bolts, seized bolts, lost bolts. It's been a shocker, but we have got it all together. Everything we intend on doing, we did just scrape in and get done. All right, that's a wrap on another huge day in the MX Store Garage. We got a lot done today. Unfortunately, we didn't get the radiators on. That'll be tomorrow's job, so another big day lined up. We have our viewer vote open. Every vote counts. We want to hear your thoughts. Hopefully, you'll be voting for the YZ, but either way, get those votes in. We also have our show and shine, October 8th. We want to see your bikes there, so if you've got a sick bike, jump online and register. We'll have our wreckers bikes there. They'll be in the finished product, so they'll be looking sick. That's it from me. We'll see you in the next episode. Getting rid of this. <laughs>